how does it feel when Benamarco comes out and defends the club and you so strongly? Well, I think it's just an indication that we're strong. We're united. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to get better. Um, collectively, you know, we've got some passionate chin boners, passionate members out there that want to see us improve and get better. And we're open for taking that feedback on board and moving moving forward together. That's what kangaroos do. History, history shows rebuilds are tough. Yeah. And you've got to weather the storm. Yep. Be confident you can get through yep. this and yep. whatever. I just, so our members and our fans understand, I took this job on understanding that there will be difficult times. I'm here for the long haul. I want our club to be successful and strong. And all the things that get misreported outside are just not true. What's been misreported though? Oh, well, relationships with players, relationships with coaches. Yeah. I was directed by the club to apologise. They are all untrue, substantially untrue. So I wish people would stop reporting them because they're not true. I don't know how many times I have to say that our players are engaged, our players are moving forward, um, our coaches are terrific. I've got a great relationship with our coaches and where we're going. I've got a great relationship with the CEO and the board, understanding exactly where we're going. For the last time, we are moving forward together. And yes, it's challenging. And you know why it's challenging at times, guys? Because building high performance is difficult. Where we're building from needs to be rigorous. You need to have debate. You need to challenge. Players become unhappy when they're not in form and they're not in the team. We get that. We're clear with our information as to how you need to get better. But I'm here for the challenge and I'm not going anywhere. So you, you, have, to change your, you have to change your approach or no. you feel like you need to? No, no. I mean, the piece around Brisbane, that's our reflection on how our environment works. We want to be vulnerable, we want to be open, we want to get ourselves to be better. If I can be better for our players and our players see that as an example from your leader, then that's what we need to have. So you run footy departments at a couple of clubs. Yeah. I think it would be fair to say that the external optics of three recruits leaving speaks to instability. Yeah. Would you agree I, with that? No, or? I don't agree with that. Okay. Would, would so, Ben, Ben, let's just... And can I just say, those three guys have done an outstanding job for our club. Let's put that on the record. Both Ben, or all three, Ben, Mark and Glenn, have had great relationships with those guys. Ben's been studying to move into another industry, not being post or leaving because he's not happy. In, in some of the reports. Mark Finnegan's a high quality guy that has had several approaches over several recent years to, to be poached. You lose, sometimes you lose good people. And Glenn has made a decision that he's made that decision and we'll sit down with him in the right time, in the right framework to pull apart as to what his information is and how we can actually move better. So it's not ideal, Sam, I get it. But a lot of clubs do lose personnel at different varying times. It would be worse to lose three recruiters coming into the national draft a week before. So there are some worse times, I guess, if you like, that you could lose people. So the old Lee Matthews theory of it's always, it's ever as bad as, yeah. it's ever as good as it seems. Totally. This is just a perfect storm where three different yep. circumstances have left coincidentally. Yeah, and, and I think, well, certainly, that's how I see it. I've spoken to all three guys, um, and I think that internally we've got a really clear plan. Now... No one here in this grouping picked us to win any games by this round. We, we are probably where we are based on all the, the journalists and the media thinking that's probably where North are going to be. So we're, not, we're, not, sorry, we're not happy with where we are from a defensive position. You know, we, don't, we want games to be tighter. We're trying to work hard on our defence. We've had a mixture of personnel. We've played some pretty hot teams. So there's some reasons around why that actually looks like. But we're probably where we should be in the sense of our build I want to win more games. There's nothing clearer. And we plan to win games every week. But it's where we are. And so now we've just got to make sure that we're collective, we're united and we're strong and we're moving forward. So, so if you expect it to be this hard to rebuild North Melbourne when you accepted that job? So yeah. This you, you don't take it on board thinking that it's all going to be, you know, beer and Skittles. It makes the end result all the more sweeter when you work through these. Um, you've got to create rigour. You've got to create debate. You need to understand that to create standards and an environment where success is maintained is bloody difficult. And where you start from, you've got to create that rigour. Even though we were just saying before, so when um, you came in your first press conference, yep. um, you said that Ben's ambition to be playing in, pushing for the top four within two to three years was a realistic ambition for this group. Yeah. That, that... Is, is it unrealistic now or was it a bigger job than you thought? No, I don't, I don't think it's right. unrealistic. I think that the context of what Ben was saying is that some, and particularly where the age grouping that we had at that particular time, we've moved a couple on since then. 
So that sort of changed the dynamic. It could sort of take 12 months to really work out. Um, we just have to now get that step better, get it right, and move forward you know, in the right manner. What do you think the, um, the average margins are a bit worse than last year? What do you put that down to? As so we're trying to put a system in place, and the execution of that system is difficult because it's all built on everyone functioning together. It's not a one-on-one, -on -one, a man-on-man -on -man type of system, which is a bit easier to, to manage and to coach. Um, We've had some holes sort of through our ground. I think where our mids are sort of running from a transition, it's probably three or four different things. And we haven't had any consistency with our defensive group together. You know, to build that synergy for a Luke McDonald to understand what a Ben Mackay is going to do, to understand what a Kane Turner or a Bailey Scott's going to do, we haven't had the time to build that synergy so that their reaction time and their, their fluency of how they function together is instinctive. So it, it probably takes you 50 odd games, I reckon, to get that group together. So are you, are you prepared now for things to, to get a little bit worse before they get better? Oh, no, we feel like internally, we feel like the measures that we're putting in place and the things that we're starting to tweak are coming to hand a bit better. We felt we defended for way longer better on the weekend. Um, some turnovers in the early part of that, that last quarter allowed Melbourne to sort of skip away and then create momentum. So we feel like we're making ground. It doesn't necessarily feel like that on the number but we certainly feel like our structure and our execution of that is getting better. You say you take... your relationships with the players are good. Yep. If that is the case, then can you reconcile while someone like Jason Paul Francis doesn't want to talk about contract extensions until... Yeah, I, I can talk to his manager. And what would he say? I, that's, it's not an unusual situation for a first-round player to not sign his contract. I've talked to Sam about that lots of times. That That is not an unusual circumstance. I'm sorry, but that's not... I, I don't see that as an issue. Can you clarify what happened? over Mother's Day weekend, just because there's so many reports. Yeah, he went home to see his mum. And the club knew? No, no, that, you know the answer. That's been reported. The club didn't know that he went home. He didn't get into trouble. He wasn't suspended. We sat down with him and said there's protocols because what happens if if he's drug tested and he doesn't know his whereabouts, the club actually gets fined. So there's an understanding from an 18-year-old to go, oh, OK, I've got to report that. There was no issue with him going home. He just needs to let us know. He's 18 years old. He's a first-year player. He doesn't he, know. He doesn't know. That's right. And there's yeah. a lot of things that go into it. Have you met with him this week to, to sort of show him a bit of support? He's only a young fella and he's found himself in yeah. the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. No, I've spoken to him several times through the week just to check in and see that he's OK. Um, yeah, he's... Look, he's a ripping young man. He understands that, yeah, there's certain elements that he's still learning that he's got to put in place. It's like filling in your diary every day. He doesn't come in and fill in that every day, you know, like he should sometimes, and neither does Jack and neither does Aaron Hall and a few others. So they're just things that we're trying to create in our environment, again, to drive standards and to get that high performance and, and going. What you said really early, you talked about incorrect media reports around you being directed by the club to apologise. Yeah. So that's the part that's wrong? You did yeah. apologise, but it was off your own back? Yeah, I said to the group, I reckon I went maybe a tad hard, right? I think, I'm not sure if it was um, a while ago, I think Sam Mitchell got lauded for you know, being fairly direct and I think that was this year. Is that right? Might have been last year. But so I get it, you know, and there are certain times and, um, and circumstances where if players don't deliver performance, if I don't create a standard and create a direction that we need to take, then I'm not doing the job properly. So you'll go hard again if you need to? Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you had to address everything that's happened this week with the phone call, the, the, the stuff, the departures, the interview and stuff? Um, you sort of do it in passing, I think, Riley. Like, we had a, um, a leadership group meeting yesterday. It's like, yep, the stuff's around. Keep listening to what's going on internally. If you've got any concerns, come and see us. Talk to Dan, myself. Um, yeah, I, 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 look, it's, it's around. They know it. Um, but, you know, we're moving forward. I think our footy has actually got better in the last month. You know, if you have a look at what we're trying to put together, um, I think our style's starting to come to hand. We need to get our defence better. Um, but not specifically sat them down and said, right, this is what's going on. Do you understand why Glenn mightn't have felt supported? Or you didn't feel supported? Well, we'll, we'll, look, I've spoken to Glenn. I love working with him. Yeah. Um, I love his numbers. I think he provides... I'm into that data. Yeah. I love the money ball side of things. So um, I've rated Glenn for a long period of time, even when he was at Champion Data. And I've spoken to him a lot, of, a lot of times over the journey. So in the right time, we'll sit down and talk to Glenn and understand where we could improve and we'll go to work. How much do you draw on your experiences at Brisbane to help, you get, help the club get through this year? I think the lines are probably very similar. Yeah. We lost record during their second season. They've, Brizzy got their defence tightened a bit quicker in that second year. So that, that's probably, that's the frustration is trying to tighten that, you know, that score against. But 
yeah, a lot, a lot of other experiences through Adelaide that I've been as well. Um, you know, my own coaching through Glenelg, I'll draw on a lot of those those aspects. And you know, what? I've got some great support, some great mentors around me that um, I'll use to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. But you know, we're not going to change the plan. You know, we've got a clear direction to how we want to go about it, and we just got to stick to the course. You mentioned the former players; that the doors always open. Do you pick yeah. up the phone to them? Yeah, I've picked up the phone to a few, but I'd love to to have a catch up with a few of those guys. Um, they can help mentor some of our younger guys. Um, they have good ideas. Some of the skills at times that we're trying to teach don't necessarily get taught coming through junior footy anymore. You know, some one-on-one -on -one structural pieces. So, um, yeah, I'd love to, to have a chance to sit down with a few of those guys and, and see what help they can give us. Did you meet the Saints on the weekend? Yeah, I think so. Do you yeah. get, get any back? Get any back? Um, I don't think so. I'm not sure Ben will be ready. Um, he had a, had a pre-run this morning. Um, but I'm not sure, but can I, can I just say before we forget, I, I just want to pay recognition to our captain. But all of this stuff, we cannot forget what a fantastic achievement it is for, for Jack to get to 250. He had some you know, really bad injuries early in his career. Um, he's honest, he's hard, he's classy, he's so well respected. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with him as a captain. Um, he changed positions last year, he did nothing more than just say, Yep, I can take that on board and showed a, an enormous amount of courage and leadership to our group last year. So um, I hope we can get across the line for him on, on Sunday because he's a special guy and he's a great captain of our football club. He must be pretty proud of how he's been able to get out the front and do a number of interviews and just really yeah. lead the club. Yeah, he's, um, he's been really proactive. Um, he's pretty protective, which is why they're good captains. You know, they're good leaders when they're going, oh, hang on a minute, just stay here and I'll get out the front. So... Um, we don't have to ask. He reads the play really well. Um, but yeah, he's he's a great guy. I love working with him. In terms of Sunday's game, yep. coaches are often split between blocking out the external noise. Yeah. Some embrace the noise, you know, world's yeah. against us type mentality. Yeah. Where, where do you sit? Could oh, you use this week on Sunday? Oh, there's parts of it that you can. I think if it's too, if it becomes too emotional, then I think you lose the, the sustained energy that you actually need in the game. So... I think when the players run out, I don't think it counts for too much. I, I think, you know, you might be able to do a little bit of poking and prodding in training today. We haven't used it as a, as a lever this week. Um, we're sort of going, up. No, we're internal, let's back ourselves in, let's keep backing everyone, and, yeah, it's starting to rain. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.